both very much for sharing. It's a completely depressed me. <laughs> so think about this. The, the international investors, that, you can hear me, right? Yeah. You have a microphone? Hi. Yes. How are you? Good. Uh, all right. The international investor that we're referring to here, your fund of funds and your endowments, um, in the alternative space, they'll put today 5 10% of total in venture. Um, out of that, they'll put 3% outside the United States and Europe. So start scaling your numbers down, and what tickets are you looking to write? Five million, three million, 10 million, 20, if you're a lucky day? How many of them are there? Not that many. So, you know, we're, we're just kind of chasing, you know, money that's not gonna make move the needle whatsoever. And the core difference here is domestic capital and government policy, because there needs to be scaling to be able to completely change the dynamic of the game. And, and that is what's important. And interestingly enough, some of the success from China comes from the fact that a lot of them bridged the West Coast and China. So when you go back 20 years, you find a lot of these very talented individuals, men and women, were all, uh, had two houses. One in, in, uh, in China or in Hong Kong, and the other one was in California. But they all had houses in California. They were all part of that. And they spent a nine month of the year there, or whatever, three month here, right? And so that's because that's where they could find backing for their ideas. Because the infrastructure that the United States fell into, and it, you know, it was just, it just, they were fortunate because of a very strong academic support that they had, right? So, the, so when we look at this and we look at you know, the alternatives that were presented, Unless there's scaling, there won't be a difference. And you know, we're just looking for kind of small ideas. And the problem is venture funds, seed funds, what, 100 million, 150 million dollars? How many are you gonna do like 20,000 of them? You know, what, what are we gonna do with those, right? There has to be policy, there has to be a direction. But more importantly, academia and a government has to say, we want IT, we want our bright minds, we want young people to come and enjoy and not necessarily make a profit, but to come up with phenomenal products that can benefit. Because all of us always show charts of the things that succeed. But how many companies out of 100 succeed? How many? Guys, how many? Jeff, how many? Not that many. No, that's the whole point, right? So, so right? But in the meantime, you know, what happens to the people that come up with these ideas, right? And so, you know, when we get to the corporate venturing, there is a benefit to that because they are channeling talent in a particular way. They are identifying bright students, but that again goes back to the faculties having those bright students, which again goes back to government policy having, the, having uh, those faculties having the structure to have those students, right? So I think we need to stop chasing the U.S. endowment to try to give you money in Singapore and get the Singaporean government and the Asian governments. You know, we have capital market alliances we have all these Asian packs. Why don't we have a venture pack? Why don't you all come together? Why doesn't Singapore come together with other neighbors or other you know, equally minded uh, uh, countries and, and create a pool of talent and let them move around? What, you know, share some thoughts on that yeah, idea. So, so I, I think uh, you, you, there are few, quite a few points in there, right? Oh, and, and many points. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think the first, one, the first one I'd like to, to talk a little bit of is, is I think you are, uh, you, you are uh, spot on, right? So, so, so uh, this is a market where, where there could be a lot of money chasing too, too few deals, uh, yet at the same time, uh, the reverse is 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 also often true, which which is this the market, and that creates the the market uh, cyclicality. We are at a point in time, uh, and because we are seeing early success in in, in very huge up rounds uh, coming from a few small companies, uh, and and people saying, hey, they raised a hundred million dollars. Uh, there's a market there. Let's put more money in. When the funds are getting more money, they say. But where's the deal now, right? So, so, uh, and then when, 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 and, and so, the business in a way needs to be developed 
uh, concurrently. It's it's a it's an ecosystem where 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 the deal flow and and the managers of the funds and the ultimate investors in the fund uh, grow it in concert. And I think. Uh, in, in many markets, uh, we we don't see that historically. Even with 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 China, there was a time when a lot of money flowed in, and then and then there was no money at all. And yeah, then see, so you keep talking about money, yeah. but isn't really about innovation? I mean, isn't it? You know, where is the Karlinska Institute in Asia? That's in Sweden. That's in Stockholm. The cutting edge, more Nobel Prize winners in health and science. Where? Show me. Well, what about and why the collaboration? haven't you created it? There's a collaboration between Tel Aviv University and Tsinghua called mm -hmm. the Zin Research Center. I mean, I think there are things going on. No, no, I know, but I'm just saying we need more of that, right? The Mayo Research Center, There, there right? are quite a, quite a few things happening in, in terms of innovation and, 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 and IP generation and all that. So, so about two, three years ago, uh, Huawei, Overtook all their U.S. counterparts as the largest filer of patents. So, so you are beginning to see, uh, you are beginning to see innovation coming out of Asia, coming out of China, in particular. Uh, in many ways, that innovation is very much later stage. Uh, governments in Asia uh, have, very, relatively speaking, very little funding US versus the U.S. U European counterparts into basic research. Yeah, but let me stop uh, you yeah. here. Let me stop you. Mm -hmm. Why would the government not put a policy of all its life uh, plan sponsors, so li long life insurance companies, and um, the next panel can be shorter, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the life insurance companies and pension plans, and say, put 5% in alternatives. Within the alternatives, we'd like to have X in venture, work with the academics, work with policy. Now, all of a sudden, um, we, we've got uh, proper funding, right? Because, you know, one of the things that you haven't touched on any of you, because you know, I like corporate funding. I, I don't have an issue with corporate funding. But, uh, but you, know, uh, you know, chasing a fund to fund out of the United States or Europe, what are you talking about, right? But the amount of volume of capital that's raising here, we'll get to questions in a moment, well, that are being raised, um, you know, uh, the, the volume of capital is being raised from local institutions is very high. And it, with proper regulations, proper structures, that can be channeled correctly. And then with the proper academic and centers, and centers of excellence, right, that then can incubate and create and then we have this wonderful chart that you showed of angels and entrepreneurs and, you know, and the thing I hate the most is crowdfunding and list it. I think that, that, that's the worst thing you could ever do because it, it, um, it either overprices something or it makes something too expensive, right? So what, 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 what are, help me here in setting a stage mm -hmm. and, then, and then in today's world, what can we do in the short term? I think there's, to your, the first point you were making, I think about, there's plenty of money for small rounds in the early stage. The, the issue still is the follow on rounds and mm -hmm. that's why companies are failing or they're moving to California because there is that, the deeper pockets, more appetite for, for risk. So I met a, a startup here, at, which was at Cyberport um, and they just couldn't get the next round of funding and they've pretty much died. So. Um, but were they a great idea? Uh, well, that, that's, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Possibly not. Uh, that's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, that's an interesting point, though. Um, you, you wanted to touch on accelerators, because both of you kind of felt that, that uh, mm -hmm. there was too much. You, what, what was the point you wanted to make on the accelerators? Uh, it was just a, a question, really. One is, you know, corporates, um, is it, are they the right people to run accelerators? Is it, you know, if you've got a corporate, a corporate person, um, rather than say specialist, you know, serial entrepreneurs who are running accelerator that are then partnering with the corporate, which I think is probably that's a, a great slightly idea. better yeah. model yeah. Um, and, and does exist. Yeah. Um, but there are there are a lot of models out there, and I, I'd be interested in uh, the audience's experience of, of accelerators as well and what what they think has been working, where they think it it fits. But um, you, the, so yeah, I mean, for me right now, the, the reality is what you both presented. And that's what uh, the world has to live with. And so th the question then is how can you change that? And the way to, to change that is to get access to capital. And this is where Europe has failed. Europe has failed. Um, and you know, and um, the, um, a, there hasn't been enough support and an infrastructure created when they could have. 
And so there isn't that kind of scalability. And again, you, you, as a result of that, you have movement. Because you know, these young people need to get married, eat food, live somewhere, right? And so they're always drawn where the opportunity is, where capital is. And you know, if, when you look at the charts we're showing with the demogra demographies of, of Asia, and you're looking at the fact that it's more consumer-led, right? So all of a sudden, app and other IT-type technologies become more prevalent. Um, you know, that should attract a lot, of, a lot of people. So then the question is, can you live here for, um, in, inexpensively? And can you get the, the, uh, the visas uh, to be able to come here? In Berlin, you can. Um, but they might close Schengen down, so <laughs> we'll see about that one. <laughs> so, so, so to that point, I think you know the 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 bottleneck, if you if if you may, uh, in in terms of what I see uh, in, in in the Asian economies, at least, is is not so much a lack of capital. It's not so much a threat. Uh, it is the lack of talent. And right. I think, and I think there because there's not enough money flowing into basic research. There's not enough money flowing into the development of talent. Uh, as these companies uh, mature and they need to draw in more and more talent, uh, you know, half of my companies hire people from 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 Europe, from Latin America, from the U.S. because because they just can't find the uh, the talent mm -hmm. domestically. I think China is a different story, but but the Southeast Asian businesses that we invest in have have in particular have that have have that challenge. Uh, and and with, with regards to money flowing into research, I think that's a longer term thing. Uh, that doesn't change overnight and that needs to change in, in time. Uh, the, the the shorter term issue is 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 really uh, the talent and, and and really because you you mentioned that is it the is it the consumer that's gonna shape the market or is it the science that's gonna shape the market? And, and at least at Vickers, our, our current view is that at least in the next five years, it is the consumer that's going to shape the market. And that's where all the market opportunities are. You know, one of the most interesting models I've seen is actually a European listed company, um, uh, Oliver Schwarman, um, uh, Rocket International, right? uh, uh, um, or Rocket Capital. Uh, and um, they, that is a very interesting model. Um, because you know, basically, they roll all their profits in. They're able to grow. Uh, yep, and they go to all the countries that are non, um, you know, U.S. so to speak, and really have been able through that large pool of evergreen, as opposed to taking one individual company, listing it too early, and then you know, right. it was really funny. Uh, I love fishing, I, um, and so I was my my um, my captain was this fantastic man in Florida, and, and we're not killing big fish, or just, when I only fish what I consume. And so um, his father was an, uh, a, uh, an OTC a st uh, stock trader, uh, and he used to make markets in the old days when there weren't computers. And um, the way he used to make a fortune was he used to send a young kid to see if the company really existed. And there were a lot of companies that didn't exist. <laughs> and so he would just short them <laughs> and wait until like all of a sudden somebody realized there wasn't anything there and then he made a fortune. And so and it's uh, harder to prove these days with that's virtual, right. virtual companies. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. Well, that, and this is part of the issue, right? And that's where, the, again, you know, there's more duress on the regulators in this type of environment. Uh, because abuse can take place, then putting in place policies of growth. Uh, let's open for five minutes for a couple of questions, and then we'll, we'll call an end. Thank you, Nara. Yes, please. Uh, let us know who you are, if you're a venture capitalist, an investor, or a mind. Uh, <laughs> definitely not a mind. How And if people know what that model entails, I, I won't go into the details. So my question is, given that, uh, what do the panel think about the uh, probability of success of the Yule Bao uh, model? Five on the model. Oh, it's, it's complicated. You need about five <laughs> sentences. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain it anyway after I pose my question. Do you think that that model uh, will succeed? And if it does, doesn't it make venture capital funds a dinosaur, uh, which will get disintermediated by what is essentially, I think, a crowdfunding model. So yeah. I'll just, uh, mm -hmm. with you know, two or three sentences for those people who don't, are not familiar with the Yule Bao model, uh, it's a, it's a, Yule Bao means entertainment treasure. 
and it was developed by Alibaba. And uh, the whole world can go on and uh, read movie scripts that are posted online. And they vote for the script that they would like to see most made into a movie. And they back up their voting with money. Um, and you can like pay $10 to see the script get made into a movie, $20. The more you like the script, the more you pay. Uh, and then the, the Yula Bao then aggregates using big data the responses to see, oh, this script actually has a lot of crowd support. And then uh, they calculate, you know, like um, um, you know, betting what the returns should to those uh, individual investors are. But that's actually not the major source of the funding. They then take that data and they go to the real big money movie backers and say, hey, my pre-movie research shows that this movie will be well accepted. And then the real movie backers say, ha, huh, okay, then I'll put in a billion dollars or $300 million, depending on whether you're producing for Avatar or not, <laughs> into that movie. And then the, the crowd guys who get, uh, who actually put in money on that movie, they, they, they then don't get a substantial return on their puny amounts of money invested. What they do is that they get things that they really want, which is like VIP invitations to the first screening, uh, back to stage uh, meetings with the stars, which really appeals to, th to these people. So Yeah, but this exists in the States. Have you seen the movie Spectre? Mm -hmm. You sound like C. <laughs> All right, it's a people business. I'm M. I really am M. Well, can, so, I be, can I be Bond then? Yeah. <laughs> and you can be Bond too. <laughs> so, you know, this is all fine, you know, but it's not going anywhere. My son did that, and he had a very successful movie. Uh, you know, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, this is an example of something that kind of appeals to a certain crowd. But what, well, you just said it, you, you know, it's a, what, I mean, these people aren't making any money, right? They've just got a little bit of appeal. So you might as well give you a trophy, put it on your TV, and you can look at it every day and can say you're a great guy, you know? I mean, th this isn't what we need here today, and this isn't the, the point of this panel. The point of this panel is a people business, and it's a government uh, uh, responsibility. And, and the infrastructures, if somebody comes up with a creative way to kind of get some scripts, um, you know, turned into movies, fantastic. But listen, my friend, you gotta shoot the movie, you gotta get the actors and the actresses, you gotta get the right timing, you got the right space, you got the right commercials, you got the right things. I can keep going for an hour here, right? So the ability to make money here, you know, fine, you might get the odd success. But the truth of the matter is venture capital is a choice of, that individuals that have a lot of talent make, right? I, 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 agree, I agree with that. But it has been a successful model for books, hasn't it? Because you know, um, crowdsourcing has then led agents to recognize actually this book is popular. But it's, it's very diff different reading a book to a script because, as you say, there's a lot more to making a film than the script. You can have a good script but a terrible film um, and the other way around. So now, I'm now not I, sure that it's going to. I had to. a question for you. Do you read your books on an iPad or a Kindle or do you read a uh, hard copy? Both. both. I, I read hard copy stuff. Right. Like that, yeah. But I have done some screenwriting and it, it, it to read a, a script and to... To, to be able to assess whether it's going to work well as a film is really quite a skill. So I don't think the general public are going to be able to predict very well what's going to be a successful film, but it'd be fun, fun exercise. That's fun. That's right. And that, another question, and I think we have to call it, please. Um, w what's, what's your thoughts on, um, uh, it's Suraj and I am from San Francisco. What's your thoughts on engineering reform, you know, within the universities? Um, because the, the thing I see that, you know, the reason why Silicon Valley does very well, there's two things. Firstly, we have some great universities. Secondly, you know, it's very, it's kind of easy to build a company from zero to a hundred million, even in the valley, the, the minute you take the company from a hundred million onwards. And there's very few people, there's very, you need product managers at, uh, at, at different levels, you need engin engineering managers at different levels. and. The problem about Southeast Asia, it's, it's still in its infancy with the exception of Alibaba and a few other companies. There's very few people who understand how to build those companies. That, that's what they were saying before. Yeah. But yeah, you know, one thing is interesting because you mentioned universities and we talk about universities, but how many of the, the talent in venture and creation actually sometimes goes and finishes university because they're too bright for university? 
Uh, so how do you capture these people, right? That's absolutely correct, Zuckerberg and Gates, yeah. So, but no, no, but, you, but you, your point is correct, and I think the panel said this earlier. Uh, we, we need talent. Sorry? No, we need talent, though, right? No, no, I think what you are referring to is applications, very simple uh, technologies, where it comes to deep innovation, new materials, uh, biochemistry, uh, medicine, you cannot escape universities. No, no, I, no, but I agree with that. No, but I'm saying some, I'm saying some have, right? So, so yeah. I think so. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.